What's up, guys? So this is basically just a little bit of understanding that I really had to open up for me today that was kind of missing before. So <clears throat> I guess the way I was brought up, you know, I was very allopathic-minded, pharmaceutical-minded. I didn't believe in a lot of the natural health modalities because that's the way it was hammered into me. You know, it was hammered into me that way by the culture. It was hammered into me into me that way by family members you know not necessarily in a bad way it's just that's what they knew so uh understanding detox there's still those people you could still watch mega channels on youtube that say that detox and things of that nature anything that says detox or alkalize is snake oil and Okay, so maybe the alkalized thing's gone way too far. I've heard a great argument recently. Uh, that was actually from Dr. Darren Schmidt, who is a health practitioner in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And I swear I've met the guy. I don't know, but he seems so familiar. So much about him seems so familiar. Um, and yeah, I'm formerly from Michigan, but I really wasn't into... I mean, to some extent, I was into natural health when I was in Michigan, but I was like a baby, and I definitely didn't have his practice on my radar. He's a bit older than me, I think. Anyways, I just had a birthday. Thanks. Happy birthday to me. Uh, anyway, so back to the detox thing. Darren was basically talking about how this alkalize, alkaline diet, cancer can't exist in an alkaline environment. Um was based on a bunch of research on the ashes of foods. Like they would burn up, say, spinach leaves, and the ashes of those foods would be alkalized, you know, and most likely the ashes of meat would turn acidic, and supposedly, I don't know how they came about it, but the, the dude's name was Otto or whatever, and it doesn't really make sense if you consider it looking at it from the human body perspective. Um, it's all fine and dandy to some extent. Some people can benefit from a little bit of alkaline, alkaline stuff, but most of the health practitioners that I know and I, I pay attention to have all come to the same agreement that the alkaline myth is that. That's it. Uh, but the detox thing, your body needs to detox. It needs help, especially in this day and age because there's so many toxins out there. And... <clears throat> Uh, you know, I say this all the time, there's stuff jacking with our hormones every which way we look. And whether that's fake lighting, you know, I mean, what was it, the 1903 World Fair, the first World Fair that was ever lit at night or something? That was like a mile marker for how artificial lighting has started to mess with our hormone production. Uh, we were made to observe sunsets on a regular basis, sunrises. Those were supposed to help regulate our melatonin levels, among other things, our hormones and stuff. But we don't do that anymore. Most of us don't do that anymore. We're underneath uh, a lot of LED lights now, and there's a lot of information out there that LEDs can be harmful, uh, depending on what color they are, for sure. You know, like blue lighting, blue artificial lighting is the worst for your eyeballs. That's why we've got all these blue light filters on our phones nowadays, which I love those, actually. <laughs> I kind of like them for watching movies because it adds a cinematic look to them uh, a little bit more than usual. And personally, the cinematic, uh, I've got another channel where I talk about sunsets and my photography. It's for the love of sunsets. I don't know if you know that, but Instagram, YouTube, whatever. And I just love the cinematic feel. It feels more authentic. I, I don't know why, like, just those colors. It's supposed to be, like, the most appealing aesthetic colors ever. And I remember a time when I didn't really like those colors, too, which was pretty recent history. But anyways, I'm getting off subject. Um, the detox thing. Your bodies need help detoxing. They definitely do. Your liver has got such a heavy load because there's so many functions that your liver has to do and you don't really help it out very much, do you? I can almost guarantee, well, you know, some of you guys may be listening and yeah, I had milk thistle, you know, I did that once <laughs> and that's the way a lot of people can treat it, you know? Um, 
but an idea of a cleanse and ongoing and yeah I'm relatively new to all these different kinds of cleanses that I've been doing lately for me like colon cleanses I've only really started in the last six months of my life so I'm definitely not like a veteran by any means but I know there's people out there that haven't even taken that step and if that's you I would highly suggest it so the order of detox colon digestive those are kind of the same one and the same then there's liver gallbladder and then there's kidney uh, lungs lymphatic and skin those are kind of the order of operations that is pretty much agreed upon maybe with a little here and there variants and then maybe specifics like uh, heavy metal detox is thrown in there later so the reason why I think it's so important, and some of the things that I've really had revelation on recently, is when we take in substances. <clears throat> okay, let's step step back one more time. Life. There's an old uh, soap opera, like sands through an hourglass. So are the days of our. I don't know if I'm infringing on somebody's copyright if I use that whole quote, so I'm just going to stop it there. But anyways, our life is basically pretty comparable to an hourglass in a lot of ways. Our bodies, some people have hourglass figures. They say that's the most appealing. And have you ever seen, you ever played Boggle in the hourglass sand, a three-minute timer, your egg timer, or whatever, you ever seen how it gets stuck sometimes? Okay, so the argument there may be a little weak just because we're a little bit more complex than an hourglass, but we're very similar because a lot of the time some of the stuff inside of us can get stuck and stopped up. And uh, just if you are having issues of things coming out the other end, if you eat three meals a day or whatever somewhere like that and you only poop once a week, that's a lot of stuff that's getting trapped inside your body that should be coming out. I've heard the best idea is every meal, you should be having an equal bowel movement. Now, to some extent, yeah, our, body, our bodies utilize the food, but not 100%, nowhere near 100%, right? So I was also thinking about this because I stepped up the amount of colon cleanse, as in um, from a two-quart stepped up to three quart because I was actually watching a four quart <laughs> bucket enema video where some of the tools out there are four quarts. And I was like, whoa, um, three quarts. Once I've worked up to that, it makes me feel really full right now. But after I released three quarts, I literally had like a dark, black, dark matter that was very much like a black sand come out of me. And I've done more research and heard other people talking about they've released this, doing different detoxes, and it's it's really mind-blowing that this stuff was preventing me from eliminating stuff. And I feel so much better now that I have eliminated those things. During my detox and stuff, these ups and downs, I've felt... I can feel down when my body's in those phases of detox that I talked about before of needing more amino acids, more fibers, more water, whatever it is to help me eliminate those wastes. But there's the other end that energy levels peak, shoot up higher than I've known in a while. I feel better. I feel younger. I feel more vibrant. And it becomes uh, just amazing to me that I had these things stuck inside me that I had no idea about and so getting back to the detox thing we really need to go through this order of detox because um, if you haven't cleared those waste passageways then where's the toxins going to go how are they going to get out of your body where are they going to go like I've I, I guess mainly from a parasitic point of view, a lot of these toxins are going to try and go into other organ systems since they can't get out through the main area of your colon. That's where it's supposed to be the easy exit. That's where they're supposed to go. 
um, it just makes so much sense now thinking about the healing crisis or the Herxheimer reaction is the painfulness, the open sores, the rashes, the headaches. Some of these things are just signs that you're not eliminating properly because some of these things will just literally take the shortest path to get out of your body possible. So I guess those are just some of the things I've been thinking about lately. Those are some of the things I wanted to share, some of that recent revelation. And yeah, you could check out some of my my other videos I've done on detox. And yeah, guys, thanks for listening. Uh, thanks for the happy birthday wishes. Uh, thank you. Also had an anniversary. Happy five years to me and my lovely wife. Very grateful for that. But yeah, other than that, guys, stay healthy. Check out some of these other videos. Leave your comments below. And thanks so much for listening. Uh, recently, I started an affiliate program. And some of the links in some of my videos now have affiliate links, which I could possibly use to help keep this channel going. And, you know, the best thing you could do is just share this video or some of the other videos you might like of mine with somebody who might benefit or somebody that has questions. And I would really appreciate that. Thanks so much, guys. Stay healthy.